What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome to another edition of Terribly Great Titles where I look in depth of some of the most hilariously bad movies ever made and discuss why they are terribly great. And today I'm taking a look at a more recent movie that came out. Ever since I heard about this movie a year ago, I've been dying to see this film after seeing some of the reviews on it. And boy, did it not disappoint. Today, let's talk about John Travolta and the Fanatic. The Fanatic was released in 2019. What's crazy is this movie was originally released on VOD, but the movie ended up having an interesting reaction to it that it actually did get a limited theatrical release because of the interesting reaction people have had on this film. The movie was directed by Fred Durst, and if you're unfamiliar with Fred Durst, he is the front man for the infamous rock band Limp Biscuit, what many people consider one of the worst rock bands of all time. I actually agree with that. I've heard Limp Biscuit a few times in my life and can't stand their music. Like people say Nickelback is bad, but man, Limp Biscuit, their sound is ugly. I can't stand Limp Biscuit. So Fred Durst is now directing movies now. And he directed this stinker of a film that is actually quite a hilarious romp for all the wrong reasons. And let's dive into it in this crazy little review of The Fanatic. So in the film, a rabid film fan stalks his favorite action hero and destroys the star's life. And this movie, like I said, stars John Travolta as our stalker by the name of Moosey who goes after his favorite actor, an actor by the name of Dunbar. And the movie just kind of escalates from there. Now, you know you're in for a crazy ride with two different things. One, the narration is abysmal. Like, whoever wrote the dialogue <laughs> from the narration should be fired because some of the dialogue that this poor actor has had to say is so ridiculous like I knew this movie would be an experience when the, like I think her first line is like Los Angeles or as I like to call it the city of BSers and I'm like oh my gosh we're <laughs> that is a terrible line <laughs> and it's done in the most cheesy way and then let me go through other lines of narration she says as well and it cracks me up i have a list of quotes on here thanks to imdb later on she's like but i suppose when you find the cookie jar it's hard not to go back for more and then my personal favorite she's like she goes moose didn't just cross the line he effing nuked it <laughs> that is <laughs> Oh, uh, George Lucas, right? <laughs> wow, I feel bad for that actress who had to say such terribly stupid lines like that. <laughs> and then your other sign that the movie's gonna be an experience is when you see John Travolta for the first time as Moosey. He goes in a memorabilia-esque store and his first line of dialogue, and this has already been made fun of even after a year of this movie being out. He says, I can't talk right now. I gotta poo. <laughs> and then it just gets crazier and crazier from there. Now, a lot of people flack on John Travolta. They love to trash John Travolta for making some terrible career decisions. A lot of people hate him in this film. And then he was also in Gotti, which I've not seen, but I've heard it's just as bad, maybe worse. 
And let me know down below if I should tackle Gotti, if it's also hilariously bad. And he's done other bad career choices as well. Like, I remember him being in the Disney film Old Dogs with Robin Williams. And that movie's near unwatchable, in my opinion. And that's a shame, because John Travolta has proven to be a good actor. He's been in some good movies over the years, like Grease and Pulp Fiction. And The Taking a Pill in 1, 2, 3, where he was actually a surprisingly effective villain in that film. But, yeah, with the fanatic, even though he's trying his hardest in the material... It comes off as unintentionally hilarious. And I don't know if that was what they were trying to go for because John Travolta's character, Moosey, it's greatly implied that he's autistic because of how he functions and reacts when things don't go his way. I've seen enough autistic people uh, in my life to know how a lot of them react. So I think that's what they were trying to do with... John Travolta's character, but the movie does not establish it well to where you sympathize with his character, and because of John Travolta's overacting the part, it comes off as more unintentionally hilarious than anything else. And on a So Bad It's Good level, John Travolta's hilarious. I think if you're just trying to watch it with a straight face, you'll hate his performance and agree that he won the Razzie for this role, which he did win the Razzie, by the way, for the fanatic. And yeah, this it's definitely something you just gotta see to believe. There were moments in this film where John Travolta goes Nicolas Cage crazy. And again, the movie, I guess, is trying to set up something to say involving how we should treat celebrities like it's it trying to be a social commentary on celebrity worship and stalkers because the whole premise of the movie moosey john travolta's character he wants an autograph from his favorite actor and the actor flat out refuses and so john travolta ends up becoming a crazy stalker after this actor. The movie, I guess, is trying to be a social commentary on celebrity worship and how that is awful, but the movie fails in its commentary because the movie paints everybody as awful. Like, I think the movie wants you to sympathize with John Travolta's character, but the reason that doesn't work is because he's too obsessive, he's too crazy. And you can't really get behind him stalking the actor. Well, what about the actor Dunbar? Should you feel bad for him because he's being stalked? No, because he's such a complete jerk to John Travolta's character, which made him become a stalker. Like, he c completely insults the character throughout the entire film. He keeps making fun of his disability throughout. And it's very off-putting seeing a uh, fictional celebrity insult somebody to the point that would drive the other guy to go crazy and it is very off-putting and you can't really root for anybody in this movie that's a definitely a big fail for this movie fred dirtz as a director i don't know if he understood the material well enough or he's just not that experienced as a director to tackle something like this and it can come off as pretentious sometimes especially considering what people thought of Fred Dirtz as a rocker. I guess he's trying to share that frustration in the film, but it does fail pretty miserably. Speaking of Fred Dirtz, one of the most self-indulgent scenes I've ever seen in my life is when Dunbar, the Dunbar character goes and plays Limp Biscuit to his son. He's like, oh yeah, jam that Limp Biscuit. This was great music back in the day. Oh yeah. And I'll just roll my eyes because I don't know anybody who enjoys Lint Biscuit, but oh my gosh, I can't believe Fred Durst would include that in a movie. This <laughs> then uh the what makes the movie so entertaining is just all the things John Travolta does for this entire movie. For example, part of the movie is he is part of this scheme with 
kind of this con artist type thing at one part of the movie. And part of his gag is he dresses up as a British police officer. And he has like an over the top mustache and everything. And there's this one scene where he's changing in the bathroom. And while he's putting his stuff on, he keeps repeatedly going, Poppycock! 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 It's this hilarious British accent throughout. And it kind of made me wish it was Nicolas Cage in the role, too. But John Travolta, he was going Nicolas Cage at some parts of this movie, which was so entertaining to watch. And then another aspect of this movie that cracked me up throughout. Eventually, Moosey has had enough of being made fun of by people he thought he could trust, such as the con artist guy, I think his name is Tyler that I brought up. Tyler starts making fun of them and mocking them for his disability and stuff. So then, oh actually his name is Todd, not Tyler, I'm sorry. And so Moose, Travolta's character, eventually has had enough, starts strangling the guy. And I'm going to read the quote that he actually said in my normal voice. He goes, Travolta says, I wish Freddy Krueger would come and chop off your head and it would roll down the street and a truck would squish it and the blood would splatter everywhere and everyone would watch it. Okay, sounds like a threatening little threat there. But then you can't take it seriously because of the way Travolta delivers this line. And I'm going to try to imitate it the best way I can. He's like, I couldn't keep a straight face watching a scene that's supposed to be intense. It's so hilarious the way Travolta delivers that line. You can't take it seriously. You really can't. There's some other crazy, hilarious moments in there as well. Like, after like the third or fourth time Travolta didn't get his autograph, he manages to find the actor's house through an app. And then he delivers a letter explaining his frustrations and stuff. But then his housekeeper sees the letter that he left behind and he sees her getting and he's like, don't open it, don't read it, don't read it. <laughs> he kind of has a little argument with the housekeeper and she thinks he's a weirdo and a freak and wants him out. And so he then punches the woman in the face. She conks her head on a water fountain dead instantly, right? And then Travolta sees the dead woman, blood coming out of her nose. And let me read to you the exact words that he says. It is so funny. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's nosebleed. That that's bad. I had a nosebleed. It wasn't funny. So in his eyes, she's not dead. She just had a bad nosebleed. <laughs> Some other crazy moments in this film that had me dying of laughter, literally. It was crazy. He wanders around the actor Dunbar's house. He sees two moose antlers, and he seems to enjoy these antlers, as his name is Moosey. He puts the antlers on his head. He's like, ooh, I'm a moose, I'm a moose, ooh. Later on, when Dunbar comes back and he falls asleep, <laughs> Travolta's going around snooping everything. He's putting a blanket on the guy, around the guy, kisses him on the forehead, and takes a selfie with him when he sleeps. I guess that's supposed to be un that's supposed to be a creepy scene, but it, again, it just comes off as unintentionally. Hilarious. So ultimately, people are kind of creeped out by Moosey's obsession. Even the his female friend, I think her name's like Leah or something, she's the one narrating a story for some reason, has kind of had enough, and she kind of severs ties with them and other things like that. 
And so then he, he starts getting so annoyed with this actor. He has a meltdown, calls him a fraud. He's just pretending because he's an actor. And so ultimately, he abducts him, ties him to his bed, and then... Oh, this is funny. He dresses up as Jason from Friday the 13th, grabs a knife, and looks like he's about to repeatedly stab the guy, literally scares the actor to shreds, and it turns out to be a knives out, fake out. The knife was a fake and a prop. <laughs> And it's like, oh, I'm full of her Dunbar. Oh, I'm a good actor. <laughs> okay, wrapping this up. So, uh, Dunbar ends up tr tricking Moosey into believing that uh, if, if he lets him go, he'll give him whatever he wants, such as the autograph and stuff. So, Moosey starts untying him, but then... Dunbar just goes all self-defense crazy, starts stabbing Moosey repeatedly, such as stabbing his eye out and stuff. Moosey ends up getting out of it, though, leaving the house. I'm surprised he didn't call the cops on him, because clearly he's been breaking and entering, and he uh, abducts this guy and ties him to a bed. That's not right, but no, he lets the guy go. Strangely, Dunbar, even though despite being a jerk earlier, and he acted in self-defense, he gets arrested for stabbing him, and he's also the one who gets arrested for the housekeeper death, even though that was Moosey. And that didn't really make that much sense. Uh, it's really off-putting that Moosey went off scot-free, even though... He kidnapped somebody, snuck around the guy's house as a stalker, and unintentionally killed a woman. That was a little weird. Uh, I don't understand the message Fred Durst was trying to come across. Is he trying to say autistic people are mentally ill and they need to be stopped? Because that's not really the best message to come across, movie. I will say the movie does end on a funny note, however, when John Travolta as Moosey is walking down the street and some tourists, tourists are walking by and they mistake him as an actor wearing makeup. Even though it's clearly obvious that somebody stabbed his eye out. Oh man, that was such a funny scene. So, The Fanatic. It's a movie that... On the surface is one of the worst movies of 2019. It is poorly directed. Anything that was interesting about the film, it shot in the face uh, because of how bad the performances are, how much each actor overacts, especially John Travolta, uh, how misguided the commentary and the message is, and I guess how pretentious it can be a little bit too based on Fred Dirt's ego as a rocker and I guess also now as a filmmaker but I can't deny how entertaining this movie is for all the wrong reasons even though the message does not work the commentary falls flat on its face the movie's still a ton of fun to watch especially for John Travolta John Travolta even though he doesn't pull off the character in such a heartfelt manner to where you sympathize with him He's still ridiculously entertaining in the film, and it's just fun seeing Travolta overact and say some ridiculous dialogue and just laugh at how much he's desperately trying to stay relevant in 2019. It's such a blast to watch for that alone. I think objectively, I would give The Fanatic half a star because it fails on almost every level. And on the 100 point scale, I'd give it a 10 out of 100, mainly for Travolta. Entertainment wise, it'd probably get 5 stars. <laughs> oh man, I just, I just couldn't get enough of the fanatic, man. Like, it's ridiculous at how much this movie fails so hard at telling a story, but it's so entertaining to watch at the same time. Man, you gotta check this movie out if you can. It is terribly great. So that wraps up my review of The Fanatic as part of my terribly great title series where 
I review a movie that has a reputation for being terrible, but it's also ridiculously entertaining and you can enjoy it on a so bad it's good level. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist of other movies I've tackled in this series so far. This is a series that's still in its infancy stage. I've only, I think, reviewed three movies so far, such as Leprechaun, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and Sylvester Stallone's Over the Top. I got a lot more ideas planned for this series. If there's any so bad it's good movie you think I should check out and it'd be a great movie to tackle in this series, don't be shy to leave your request down in the comments below and I'll figure out when to integrate them in my series if I'm interested. Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below. Click the link in the description below to see some of my past videos and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future videos in this series. But if you've seen The Fanatic, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this film. Did you enjoy it? Did you despise it? Do you think it's terrible or do you think it's terribly great? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!